for single organisms, perhaps the easiest models, uh, particular bacteria, so single bacteria are added to a complex microbiota. And when these particular organisms, one being Enterotoxigenic Bacteroides fragilis, which is an organism my lab has worked on for a long time, but there are others such as E. coli that have a genomic island called PKS and has, and within that island is a DNA damaging toxin called Colibactin. And a third organism that's getting a lot of attention is Fusobacterium nucleatum, which was picked up from a large, two large sequencing studies uh, a few years ago. And in each case, when you add that individual organism to a complex microbiota in a mouse, you increase the numbers of tumors in the colon compared to the background mouse. Now, suggesting those bacteria are procarcinogenic. Um, at a minimum, studying those models helps us to better understand the mechanisms by which bacteria may be procarcinogenic and enable us perhaps to be able to look at humans then who have those organisms and see if any of those mechanisms do translate there. On the, the more uh, community side of the microbiome, uh, we recently reported that there are a subset of colon cancer where the bacteria and the lumen of the gut have managed to invade the usually sterile inner mucus layer that's right on top of the colon epithelial cells. And, and when they, that happens, that's called a biofilm. And so this is a highly dense structure of bacteria that's sitting right on the, uh, right on the epithelium in the colon. And as a result of that, there's some invasion of the tissue by the bacteria, but there's also a change in the biology of the tissue. And what we're able to see is that various molecules are changed that are considered procarcinogenic, such as loss of e-cadherin or increases in IL-6 in the tissue and increased cellular proliferation, suggesting that those abnormal bacterial structures are actually uh, modifying tissue function and may be procarcinogenic as well.